the definitive three hours in this state. Number one game of the There is nothing that compares. Virtually, as soon as you take your first breath, you declare. Either you're Auburn or you're Alabama. It is a relief. Us against them. There's a lot of bad blood. Them aren't nice people. It's the best feeling to win. It's relief. To lose. I don't even want to think about it. Who will it. be the joker and who will be the jokey? It's Auburn or Alabama. Legion Field, Birmingham, Alabama, as the Crimson Tide has just taken the field. And just a few moments ago, the United States Postal Service unveiled the design of a Paul Bear Bryant commemorative stamp. Members of the Bryant family were on hand. The design, by the way, is the fourth and final design of a four-stamp set honoring Bear Bryant, George Hallis, Pop Warner, and Vince Lombardi, a tribute to four individuals who have influenced the game of football in such a great way. So the 1996 edition of the Iron Bowl about to get underway. Marcel West, also Michael Vaughn, number 22, the two deep men for the Alabama Crimson Tide as they will take it. What an absolutely gorgeous night we have for football. 51 degrees right now. We're supposed to go down into the mid 40s. The wind, not really a problem. 8 to 10 miles an hour, south, southeast. Clear skies. In fact, we have a wonderful full moon about to uh, bloom right over the top of the stadium. As you look at Craig on the sideline. Terry Bowden, the head coach of the Auburn Tigers. First 14 games, 14 and 0. His last 17, 9, 7, and 1. Delay here at the beginning of the ball game is Gene Stallings, his resume, seventh season as the head coach, one national title, an SEC title, three SEC West titles, and five bowl appearances. And of course, his coaching career, not just here in Alabama, but he has uh, worked with some some great ones on the staff with Tom Landry, with the Dallas Cowboys as well. Mike, can you see what the delay is down on the sideline? A, a band member was injured, and you see uh, Gene Stallings even came down to uh, to check on the young lady. Did she get bumped by a football player as they were coming out? Was that that's? What we were told had uh, had happened. So Coach Stallings, ever the gentleman, comes down and makes sure that everybody is okay. Jared Holmes with the kick, line drive. Gets by West into the end zone. So let's check the starters for the Alabama Crimson Tide on offense tonight. Freddie Kitchens, he will have Riddle behind him and also look for Alexander, maybe even Montoya Madden as well. Travis Smith, the fullback. The receivers, Michael Vaughn is the go-to guy. Calvin Hall, you'll see a couple of others as well. Patrick Hape, a good blocker, and that's what he'll be used as primarily in this offense. Samuels, Friend, Causey, Meadows, and Demario. But the bell cow is Causey right there in the middle. He's a senior, and this is the last time that he will suit up against the Auburn Tigers. Gonna throw on first down. Gets it out in the flat, and there's Vaughn, the guy we talked about. Breaks the tackle, comes to the 22, the 23. Short game, and let's check the defensive starters for the Auburn Tigers. Dorsey, Brumbaugh, and Carlson. Brumbaugh has a sprain night right knee, but he will start tonight. The linebackers, very active group, and they are good. Reese, Neal, Spikes, and Mostella. And in the secondary, this is a young group, but I'll tell you they're active. Martavius Houston, probably the leader back there. The run on second down, it's Riddle. Has five, six and seven, close to the first down at the 30-yard line. Martavius Houston comes up from his safety spot to make the tackle on him, and let's see where they have marked the football. Very close to moving the chains. Ron, the toughest matchup for Auburn tonight is the young defensive front. Now, you look at it, one senior, one junior, five sophomores, four freshmen in this lineup. Jimmy Brumball, the nose guard, the best defensive lineman, the one senior, is playing hurt tonight. Depends how long he can go in there at the nose position. Bill Oliver, as we mentioned in the cut-in, of course, was at Auburn, then came to Alabama. Now is back in the plane. Running play on third down. Big opening for Riddle, has six yards. 
First down. Alabama Crimson Tide will move the chains as he got tripped up by Brumbaugh going through the middle. Well, you expect Alabama to run the football. We talked about in the uh, cut-in that we did just a little bit ago. They're going to run the football. You know that if you're Auburn. Auburn has to stack it up. They have to put eight people up at the line of scrimmage. You see last week, both tailbacks going over 100 yards versus Mississippi State. I still believe Freddie Kitchens is going to have some opportunities tonight to throw the football and throw it well. New line of scrimmage just across the 35. A lot of time. Swings the pass out to Curtis Alexander, and he's open. 45, 40, 35. Now there's a flag down deep. He will take it to the end zone, but let's check the marker. That could be against Alabama. Ron, it looked like to me that Calvin Hall, number 83, was holding the defensive back from Auburn. We'll see if that's going to be the call. Well-designed play by Woody McCorvey. Looks like it's going to go against Auburn. Sixty-three yard touchdown. Ron, I was talking about Calvin Hall. Calvin Hall, number eighty-three. Going to maybe we see if we can pick him up. Just a quick throw by Freddie Kitchens out to the outside to Curtis Alexander. Now he's number eighty-three, Calvin Hall. It looked like to me he got tangled up with the defensive back, and I thought that was going to be the call, but it wasn't. And it's an Alabama touchdown. So the Crimson Tide wastes very little time. Brock tries to make it 7 to nothing. He's got it. 13 minutes, 30 seconds left to play in the opening quarter. And the Tide is on the board. Well, tonight's aerial shots are being provided by the Bud One Airship, which travels throughout the year, appearing at many exciting sporting events across the country. And it's got a great night and a clear sky to view down at this overflow crowd who has just witnessed four plays, 80 yards, two minutes and 30 seconds. And Curtis Alexander, who was the starter at tailback at the beginning of the year until he injured a wrist and had to have surgery, comes into the lineup. So what a stable of running backs Alabama has. Watts with the kickoff. At the one, it's Baker. Robert, oh my goodness, at the 20-yard line, he gets shellacked. That is John David Phillips. Phillips is a quarterback playing on special teams, and he just put the wood on Baker. Damian Craig. John David Phillips coming down the field. He's going to make this hit. Well, really, the Actually, Auburn his own man. Yeah. <laughs> he knocked the he Auburn man into it. Knocked the Auburn man into it. Well, that's a smart quarterback. Craig on first down. Rusty Williams hit at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of a half yard, and that's it. Here are the starters, Craig. McLeod and Rusty Williams five out of the last six games Williams has moved in as the starter the wide receivers It'll be Goodson and Bailey. We also will see Baker We'll see Widow Gaucher the tight end Jesse McCovery in the offensive line This is the way they line up James Riley Tiger Thomas and Rowe and Victor Riley is the bell cow of that group the Youngster at left tackle actually a left guard. They flipped that offensive line puts it up on top just overthrown as he went for Robert Baker, number 21. That was Fernando Bryant on the cover. Defensively for Alabama, Hood, Myers, Powell, and Moore. And Michael Myers is the one that they have to occupy tonight. You'll see him doubled all night because he really can cause a ruckus. Outstanding linebackers, particularly Staten and Rudd. And in the secondary, this is a bona fide group back here as well, particularly those corners, Bryant and Townsend, and keep an eye for number seven, KJ. Kevin is an outstanding player. We'll call his name a lot this evening. Third down, line to make is the 30. Craig's pass, well overthrown and almost intercepted by Deshay Townsend. 
Ron, when you look at Damian Craig, all the teams trade tapes all through the year. And what Alabama's doing here early in the ball game is jumping the wide receivers with press coverage. Now, Florida did this against them also. Tight press coverage on the outside. And Damian Craig was 7 of 28 for 82 yards, two interceptions. So he's going to have to make some tight throws tonight. This is Holmes to punt. Gets it away. This is a dandy. Goss all the way back at the 24-yard line. Covered in white, and he'll have a return of six yards. 53 yards on that punt. Well, ESPN is your home for college football next Saturday at 6 o'clock in primetime. It's Peyton Manning and the number nine Tennessee Volunteers taking on the Vanderbilt Commodores. But first, be sure and start your college game day at 11 o'clock. Residents in scoreboard at three. Ron, that pass by Freddie Kitchens. He threw two passes in the first drive, and that tough for Auburn because when you throw the football successfully, you open up the run, and that's what Alabama basically wants to do. Here comes the running play. Near sideline, out of bounds, close to another first down at the 40-yard line is Riddle. And we need to keep an eye on the substitutions for those backs because, as we mentioned, we saw Sean Alexander on the sideline, and then they slipped number 32, Curtis Alexander, into the ballgame, and maybe a little bit more in history. He started the year as the starter tailback for Alabama, injured a wrist, had to have minor surgery, was out for four weeks. And so that gives you three guys, plus Montoya Madden is an outstanding running back, so they got four of them. Stable. This is Riddle. They put it in his stomach on this try. He'll have the first down and comes out across the 40 to the 46. Brad Ware, a true freshman out of Powder Springs, Georgia. The free safety gets him. Well, Dennis Riddle, he's the nephew of Steeler NFL receiver John Stallworth. The more carries he gets, the better he gets. He's a tackle-to-tackle -tackle runner. He had 38 carries versus Tennessee uh, earlier in the season. For 184 yards, so it gives you an idea. And also, Ron, he's really the second leading receiver on this Alabama football team with 24 receptions. So he's an excellent pass receiver. Freddie Kitchens moving his ball club tonight. Gives it to Riddle and Auburn this time. Comes up big for the task. Brumbaugh gets outside to make the tackle on him. Well, the Malign quarterback, Freddie Kitchens, uh, everybody uh, that's on the quarterback every now and then, but 19 to 43 against Auburn last year, 302 yards, had a great ball game, and looks like to me tonight he's out here to prove a point. Uh, came out early, two passes, two little short passes, but uh, I think he's out to prove a point to all the fans that he can throw the football and be successful doing it. Alabama 7 to nothing as they scored in four plays on the opening drive. That's Riddle in motion toward the sideline. Deep over the middle. Got it. Marcel West inside the 25, and he's down to the 22 as Evans puts the top on him. Well, see, I talked about earlier that uh, Bill Oliver knew Alabama's players real well, but Alabama's coaches know Bill Oliver's defense, and they're sending a little motion and then sneaking Marcel West down the field against two deep coverage. It's number nine, Dan Evans chasing him. Good throw by Freddie Kitchens. Alabama in good, sh good shape. But, Ron, you talk about knowing what Bill Oliver's going to do. Now, he'll change a few things, but Bill Oliver, Alabama knows what he's going to do tonight. 32 yards in the pass play to Marcel West. Riddle right up the middle. A couple of tough yards, and they're pushing back Brumbaugh and Neal, combining them to stop there. Good mix early in this Alabama play calling. Good uh, outside runs, inside runs, quick passing game. Hit Marcel West down the middle against 2D coverage. So pretty good play calling by Woody McCorvey. Travis Smith comes into the lineup. Montoya Madden had been in for a play. Also checking in Shamari Buchanan, a freshman out of Atlanta, Georgia, who I think, Mike, is going to be the next big-name receiver for the Alabama Crimson Tide. He's a large kid. He will be out to the bottom of the screen. He wears number 84. Great speed. Auburn shows blitz. Here they come. Kitchen steps up, drills it, looked for Hape, is tied in. Did he catch it? Nope, the official says incomplete. <laughs> Seven to nothing. Alabama third down, line to make is the Auburn 12-yard line. Again, those linebackers creep up at the line of scrimmage. 
They stay at home for the run, and Riddle going to be wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Jimmy Brumbaugh was not fooled, got by his blocker, and stops him after a gain of one, and immediately the place-kicking team comes on. Well, he injured his knee. He had a fiberglass knee brace on, and it actually broke the brace. And uh, playing injured tonight, but he's the nose guard they need against John Causey, the center, to try to get penetration. John Brock to attempt the field goal. This one from 37 yards, squarely in the middle of the field. A good pass. And he's good. Brock from 37 yards. Let's take a timeout. 9.30 left to go opening quarter. All Bama. Back at Legion Field, the Alabama Crimson Tide, a team known for playing up to their level of competition, depending on who they're playing. Today is really pumped. We saw them in LSU early in the year. They were very businesslike, went about their matter of winning the football game. But today, they want this game against Auburn. A lot of emotion here on the sideline. All right, Kellen. It's uh, for people who are watching, and, and again, have seen this series for a long time, but understand it, it's back here at Legion Field. Alabama's name in the end zone because it's their home game this year. And I. You look at the total yards so far, it's not only their home game, but it's been their game so far. Ten to nothing. Kitchens right over the middle, gets it to hate this tight end, and he'll take it to the 45 before Spikes makes the tackle on him. Thrown four passes, Ron. Three very safe throws for Freddie Kitchen. It's a little delay over the middle to Patrick Hape, who a lot of pro scouts have rated as one of the top five tight ends in the country. Take to Keo Spikes on the tackle. We got a good visit with Tequila last night, and he is uh, a very intense young man. He loves this game of football. Well, just when I was mentioning his name, he said, make sure Tequila. <laughs> See him pull the guard, the running play. Sean Alexander this time, and he will uh, take it close to the 50-yard line as Bray comes up to make the tackle on him. He made an interesting point. I asked him about last week's ball game, speaking of spikes, and how long it took him to get over it. And he said, I'm from the state of Georgia, so it actually took me a little bit longer. But he said, physically, yeah, that was a really tough uh, endurance thing. And I asked him, the first part of the week, he said, you know, they cut back on our workouts just because of all the physical uh, stuff we went through in that ball game. And, Ron, he said, uh, what he said to us, too, was that when he signed his scholarship, being from Georgia, he looked forward to that game so much. And yeah. to lose that ball game hurt him. And then you look right at Damon Craig, who we were talking and said, now you've got the Alabama game. You're from Glen High School in Mobile. And know what it means to all the players from the state of Alabama. Marcellus Mostella, senior out of Gadsden. Good look at him as uh, it is a first down Alabama. They lead it 10 to nothing, and the ball just shy of midfield. And Alabama right here. Would love to stick it in the end zone, and Bill Oliver and company knows full well they got to keep points off the board. As Alexander grabbed by the face mask, that might even be a 15-yarder. We'll wait and see as Carson grabbed him, but he turned his head completely around. Leonardo Carson's a high school quarterback that played at 260 pounds. And Auburn recruited him. They recruited him and signed him, thinking that he'd be a nose tackle. Young player, it's been forced into well, action because of all the injuries in the defensive line. Mike, that's not going to be the incidental. It is going to be a 15-yard penalty. As I said, he turned his head all the way around. Yeah, making the tackle with the face mask. So uh, another major penalty. Terry Bowden is pacing on the sideline. You know, this afternoon, Georgia got beat by Ole Miss in the second half of that ball game. Georgia looked like a tired football team. Auburn is starting this game tonight after that mini overtime affair last week. Mike, you have to wonder if last week's game took its toll on this football team as well because they don't look sharp mentally. They had the game won, and that's tougher when you lose it like that in overtime. Yep, as soon as I say that, Will Friend decides he's going to make a mistake and uh, push Alabama back uh, five yards. Ron, I'm so impressed with the way Alabama's come out. We have a dead ball foul. False start against the offense. Movement in the line before the snap. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Still first down. And I think the man you're looking at right there has had a lot to do with this team and the way they've come out of this shoot tonight. Uh, he's pointed for this football game. 
It's a big rivalry. You got to win the rivalry games when you're coaching. And they lost a very tough one last year, and uh, he's looked forward to this game for a long time. First down and 15. The new line of scrimmage, the 34 of Auburn. Draw play to Riddle. Tries to get outside in the left hip, turn the corner. 30, 25, down to the 24 before Brad Ware stops him. And on the other side of the field, Terry Bowden's team, and I know what he's thinking right now, and Bill Oliver, they need something big to happen for them defensively. They cannot allow Alabama to get in this end zone for no. another seven right here. They need a turnover bad, but they're playing with a very hurt defensive line. They don't have a lot of depth. They're playing a couple freshmen in there, Reese and Carson, and uh, they're getting manhandled right now. Picked up close to 10 yards in that play. This time, Sean Alexander comes into the lineup. Breaks off the tackle. 15, down to the 10. It will be first and goal, Alabama. Spikes finally got it. We have seen three tailbacks tonight. Curtis Alexander caught the pass. Dennis Riddle's been running, and now Sean Alexander. But I really thought Martavius Houston, the strong safety, really made a good play on that play. He was able to take out the blocker of LaRon White coming around the corner, number 51, but they couldn't bring Sean Alexander down. Calvin Hill down at the bottom of your screen as you look at Sean Alexander and his numbers left side side steps one and then uh, Carson along with number 50 Ricky Neal jump on him gains about a half yard and that's going to be about it you know when you look at what this Auburn defense has been confronted with it's been excellent field position for Alabama all night long. They took it right down the field in four plays. Then they gained field advantage as far as field position, I should say, uh, through the punt and now a second punt. So Bill Oliver's defense has been having to play uphill the entire game. And so there's far. not a lot of depth in this defense. And you mentioned the point about the Georgia game, the emotion. They fake the reverse. Sean Alexander cuts it up. That's a nice job defensively by Auburn as they'll stop him at the seven. Leonard Carson. And once again, Neal coming outside. That's one time you wish you had the reverse call because they played the fake reverse. Michael Vaughn, number 22, was coming around. Watch this play now as the pitch out comes to Sean Alexander. But the, everybody stayed with the pitch. No one ran with the reverse. Michael Vaughn was open on that backside. Shamari Buchanan, number 84, checks into the lineup at wide receiver. Alabama's going to have to hurry now that uh, play clock is down to four, down to three and two. And Freddie Kitchens looks up and sees it. He's going to call a timeout. So we'll take it with him. 338 left to play. Opening quarter, Alabama. 10-0, and they're threatening again. Alabama 10 to nothing and as you can see the back of the Auburn defense uh, they are trying to put it in the end zone again time of possession Auburn less than three minutes in this first period that's a deep in motion Quick pass right in the middle, Vaughn, touchdown, Alabama. extra point up and good 332 left opening period and Alabama has played like a team possessed Ron motion first of all by Alabama removing a linebacker then Freddie Kitchens hitting a quick slant to Michael Vaughn against Brad Ware the freshman safety for the touchdown 
Another look, Freddie Kitchens right on the mark. I believe he's like five for five uh, throwing the football. Five for six. Off to a good start, Freddie Kitchens making the big plays, throwing the football. William Watts kicks it off for the Crimson Tide. And the Wild Thing kicks this one out of bounds. Movement at the line of scrimmage. Let's see who they got this time. Dwayne Rudd. I think they're going to get Alabama. Yep. Damian Craig called for the ball and then just took a knee and catching they're Alabama offside. Offside against the defense. Five yard penalty. The receiver that Auburn has that uh, is a big playmaker is Robert Baker. Senior now they have Willie Gaucher back also so they got a good set of wide receivers if they can give Damian Craig time to throw the football. You see uh, Ty Gibson number 83. <laughs> Alabama shows blitz and here they come. Williams gets by one gets by a second. It has 5, 10, 15. He's off. Williams one man and he's caught by Staten. At the 18 yard line. Longest run, 42 yards that Auburn has had tonight, and the deepest penetration for them. Good effort by Ralph State to catch Rusty Williams, but the play started. Cedric Samuel, number 13, is a safety. Now you're gonna see him come in the picture. He's got a e not an easy tackle, but a shot at Rusty Williams. Doesn't make the play. Rusty Williams gets in the secondary. Three minutes and 20 seconds is when it came. That's the initial first down for Auburn tonight. You see the safeties creeping up. Williams hit in the middle of the line. It's KJ. Kevin Jackson, the safety, was up equal with the linebackers at the line of scrimmage. It's kind of hard to run when they're that tight. Well, when you play Alabama, they've got such good corners in Deshae Townsend and Fernando Bryant. So they can lock on man coverage on the outside. Then they can take the two safeties, Cedric Samuel and Kevin Jackson, and stick them up there in the run so that you're almost playing against the four linebackers in the middle of that defense. Mike, Mike Dubose defense is different from what Bill Oliver used also, isn't it? Very much so. There's a lot more man coverage and a lot more involving the safeties in the run. Craig. Just throws it away. The smart thing to do, and I'll tell you what. 25 Fernando Bryant simply would not let his man get away. He was dying to get the pass off. Damian Craig was to him, and I mean, the Bryant was just all over it. No, you're right, Ron. Karsten Bailey, number five, is who they're trying to go to here. Damian Craig makes a wise decision, though. Scrambling, trying to get away from the rush, throwing the ball away. Yeah, he was on Bailey, and you can see Pickett as well doing a good job on the short receiver. It's third down. Auburn needs the nine yard line. They got a problem. Alabama's got a problem on defense. And they're going to get a timeout, though. They had a matchup problem here, Ron, because of a no back set by Auburn. And is out. Alabama. Timeout, Alabama. Second timeout of the half. And Auburn needs to take it down to the Crimson Tide nine. Corner blitz. Got it away. Incomplete. And I mean Ralph Staten took Damian Craig down extremely hard. Well, there's a couple philosophies when you play against the no-back set. You can either cover everybody and drop a, a whole lot of people in coverage, or you blitz it. And Alabama decided to blitz it. Number 41, Ralph Staten from Mobile, played against Damian Craig in high school, putting the pressure on, trying to get the ball to Tyrone Goodson, number 83. Uh, couldn't make the connection. Holmes to attempt the field goal. This is a 34-yard attempt. Good pass, and he's got it. 
Auburn is on the scoreboard at the 154 mark of this first quarter. Sean out of Jamie. Puts a head down. You can see 47. Mostella is there to hit him. There is a marker down at the 29 as they were stopped short on the third down play. Where that flag is thrown, it may be offside on Auburn. Well, looks like it's going to be on Alabama. Terry Bowden getting word. Uh, the captain looks over to the sideline to decline this penalty. We have an illegal formation against the offense. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Well, that's why, Ron. The side judge usually, when that flag comes from that area, it's usually offside, but they caught him in an illegal formation. Not enough people in the line of scrimmage. Now, Terry Bowden made a decision not to take the penalty, which I think is the right decision. But Alabama now going to try to convert this fourth down play. They're going to go for it. 37, Sean Alexander lines up a tailback. Kitchens under center. Sean Alexander tripped over his fullback. He tripped over his blocking back who was Smith. Went right over his ankles. Well, Terry Bob made the right call. He turned down the penalty. He got him in a fourth down situation and caused the uh, ball to go in the other direction. Sean Alexander, 37. That's a good play by Auburn stacking up uh, that Trevor Smith, the fullback, didn't allow him to get down the field. Tequil spikes on the play. So, if uh, you, you talk about what the doctor ordered, this is exactly what the Auburn Tigers needed to get back in this. They're down two touchdowns. Now they stop them, get the ball back. And the turnover did not hurt them. Uh, the interception that Damian Craig threw did not hurt them. Talked about early what might be going through his mind tonight. The first time he's really the starting quarterback in this rivalry football game. Grew up in Alabama, knows the extent of this rivalry. Talked to us last night about the importance of the game, how he was feeling, but looked to me like he was fairly confident last night, not nervous. Well, we had a little delay in the ball game there. There was a sideline warning against Alabama, so they had moved everybody back. Counter play. Williams gets it outside, has five, has ten, and that will be not only enough for the first down, but counted off at about 12 yards. Cedric Samuel defensively. Good call by Tommy Bowden, the offensive coordinator, getting the counter play to try to slow down the speed of Alabama. They're so quick, the linebackers, that the counter play does slow them down a little bit. And Rusty Williams, a freshman tailback, has been impressive. Now there's Tommy Bowden, the offensive coordinator, who, of course, is upstairs. And he told me last night as well, he said, you know, it's hard to duplicate on the field as far as practicing how quick Alabama is. It may take us a while. Craig running for his life, broke the tackle. Finally is going to wind up with a gain of maybe two on the play, and sheer athletic ability got that as Rudd stopped him. Well, the athletic ability of Damian Craig, but he's also going against a defense that can run. The linebackers of Alabama, Staten, Buckner, and Rudd, are all very quick, and they recover very well. Dwayne Rudd makes the tackle. Good athletic ability by Damian Craig. Quick pass, knocked away. Very dangerous. Deshae Towns working against Robert Baker. Well, he thought he had the quick game on that side. He checked off to the quick game. Now, if uh, Deshae Townsend comes up in a bump and run type of technique where he's right in front of him, then you throw the fade. But he came off of him before the snap, and he thought he could throw the quick game. But Deshae Townsend just sat on the 
the five yard pass pattern. So uh, again, when you look at every tape that a team has in Alabama and Auburn, look at each tape, you got to get down maybe some automatics that they like and you can bait them into some things. You can see John Cooley a moment ago, number 15, signaling in the plays from the sideline. There's the fade right there. Baker got it. Bailey, Karsten Bailey, and he'll score from 58 yards. Ron, credit Terry Bowden. He got this. He didn't let this football game get away from him. You know, in this ball game, when you look, and we just talked about some fades, he tried to throw the quick game the other side, came back, and he did have bump and run to the short side of the field, and that was a beautiful thrown ball. Perfect. To Karsten Bailey by Absolutely. Damian Craig. Absolutely perfect. Holmes with the extra point attempt is good, and as we go to break, all of a sudden, we've got a seven-point ball game. Damian Craig puts up the fade. Karsten Bailey runs under it, 57 yards officially. Through its $1 million scholarship program, Burger King donates $100,000 per week in the name of scholar-athletes whose achievements go beyond the field in all NCAA divisions. Tonight, students of the game from Auburn strong safety, Alan Brown. He's a political science major with a 3.25 GPA. And from Alabama, tight end Clint Wagner. He's a nursing major with a 3.89 GPA. Ron, I love those Burger King commercials where they do the fight song. Yeah. That makes you go to Burger King, right? <laughs> There's one they're going to have to change. The little guy from South Bend, right? Straight ahead with a running play, three, maybe four yards. Mike Tirico, let's go back to you. All right, Ron, coming up at halftime for fans in Columbus, the sad story of what happened in the old horseshoe on the banks of the Olentangy for the fans in the desert. Will this be the night that Arizona State completes the perfect season and all the rivalries taking the headlines? But let's not forget the great rushing race all coming up at halftime. Okay, Michael. Clock runs here at Legion Field, two minutes and 40 seconds until halftime. Alabama with a one touchdown lead after Alabama had dominated the opening quarter. And now Auburn has come back to cut it to seven. Kitchen sets deep, right over the middle, picked off. Where? At the 20, at the 10. And we can be tied with an extra point. Thirty-four yards on the return. Ron Brad Ware sat in center field and watched Freddie Kitchen's eyes of where he was going to deliver that football, and he had a great break on that ball for that interception. It looked like to Freddie Kitchens it was open. But to Brad Ware, he was right on top of it. Holmes with the extra point and with 2.16 left until halftime. We are tied at 17. I mean, they are standing. They are cheering. And quite frankly, the folks from Alabama kind of in shock how quickly this has happened because they were dominating this football game. We're tied at 17. Marcel West at the one. Loses the football. Scramble at the 20-yard line. Auburn has recovered. Alabama just self-destructing, but let's look back at the touchdown play. Brad Ware, the safety. Here he is right here now. He's going to work back into the back pedal in the middle of the field. Now he's going to read Freddie Kitchen's eyes. Now he's going to try to hit Dennis Riddle. Stop it right here. Stop it. Now there's Dennis Riddle and he's open, but watch the break of the football on the football by Brad Ware for the interception. Excellent break. Freddie Kitchens threw it too far in the middle of the field. Brad Ware with the interception and a touchdown and then another turnover run right here. Auburn in great field position. 
Boy, they have it at the Alabama 20-yard line. 2.08 left until halftime. And they come with a reverse. Baker inside the 15, and he's down to the 13. It's Kevin Jackson on the stop. Here's the turnover on the kickoff. Marcel West, number one, drops the football. Auburn with great field position here now inside the 15-yard uh, line. The Tigers pick up seven yards on that last play, so that is a second down and short. The ball just outside the 13. Alabama creeps up the linebackers in the safety. They go with the running play, and that's a nice job by Samuel. If he doesn't make the tackle on Beasley, he's gone for the end zone. Well, that's what you're going to face when you face Alabama. The safeties are so tight up in your offensive situation. Kevin Jackson, Cedric Samuel sit about six, seven yards deep and read run. And then when the ball was handed off to Fred Beasley, Samuel was right in the backfield. Well, we got a timeout, Auburn, and we'll hold it right here. Let's go back to the interception and the touchdown just a moment ago. Here is the audio on the sideline and Coach Bowden when it happened. Go, Keith. Yeah! Yeah! Go, 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 go on, Brian! So the audio just a moment ago from the uh, Auburn coaches booth down to the field. And as I mentioned, as you look at it one more time, he threw the ball too far to the inside. Trying to get Dennis Riddle down the field. Brad Ware sitting right there for the interception. Had a good break and then made a good run after. Mike, it's, it's also the kind of pass that if you put air under it, let him run under it, there's no way that the defensive back could have gotten over there too. Let's check in with Kellen Winslow. Kellen. Oh, Ronnie, Mike, you're talking about that pass. It was really thrown too late, in my opinion. That's a pass he has to throw as soon as he clouds that inside guy. Back up to you guys. Auburn tries to get the play away quickly. Flags all over the place, and Craig gets knocked down by Staten. I'm not sure they were set for the snap. They were trying to do a hurry up and uh, and catch Alabama before they were set. Well, they didn't catch him because Alabama was yeah, ready for that. Foul. Foul start against the offense. Moving in the line before That's the big. That penalty right there. Third and short. And now you're back down. sitting about third and seven. But Kellen Winslow, going back to what Kellen said, he's right on that play. Freddie Kitchens need to throw that ball a little bit quicker because Dennis Riddle was behind the linebacker and the safety's in center field. The longer you wait to throw that ball, the more break that the safety's going to get. Third down, the line to make is the 10. He got 65 seconds left until halftime. Staten with a blitz right over the middle. Pass is complete. Nope, incomplete at the 11. Baker dropped it after Bryant hitting. You have to come up big defensively when you have a turnover and you get the ball inside your 20-yard line. You have got to hold them out of the end zone. Ralph Staten again with another big play, Ron. He has really had an outstanding game. Auburn trying to break the tie, Mike. This will be a 34-yard attempt from the far hash mark. Good pass, plenty of distance, and Auburn has gone in front. That's 10 points off turnovers for the Auburn Tigers. The big concern you have to have if you're Gene Stallings right now is Freddie Kitchen's uh, mental psyche right now because in the last week ball game against Mississippi State, he threw an interception and he pulled him out. He brought in Warren Faust, and of course Warren Faust struggled a little bit, and then Freddie Kitchens came back in. But if Gene Stallings will get his arm around Freddie Kitchens at halftime and tell him, say, you, you've got to help us win this football game. He'll calm him down. And come out in the second half with the same kind of game plan they started with. But it's going to be important at halftime to get Freddie Kitchen, Kitchens and tell him that the, you're still with him and he's still your quarterback. Auburn 20 to 17. And as we mentioned, 10 of those points coming off turnovers. 
52 seconds until halftime. Line drive kickoff. Taken at the five by Vaughn. Michael at the 25, 30 at the far sideline and is pushed out of bounds. They're going to say at the 33-yard line. ESPN2 has the best in college football next week at 12.30. An SEC battle. Mississippi State taking on arch-rival Ole Miss. Then at 3.30, Marcus Crandall and East Carolina battle North Carolina State. All on the deuce next week. Now, as we mentioned, Alabama owned the first quarter. And then Auburn has come on to score 17 unanswered in the second quarter. Sean Alexander in motion to the top of your screen. Kitchens drills it, has it complete across midfield. That's Calvin Hall who came back for it. And it'll stop the clock with 35 seconds, a 19-yard play. That may have been the most important play in this football game for Alabama because Freddie Kitchens knows there is confidence in him to come right back and throw the football with 48 seconds to go in the half. He's looking for the target on the right side, came off his first read, now finding Calvin Hall on the sideline. A big play for the uh, psyche of Freddie Kitchens. Goss comes into the lineup. And wide receiver, Gene Stallings looks on with his team first down at the Auburn 48. Kitchens under pressure, gets it away. Smith inside the 40, going to be knocked down at around the 38-yard line. Brad Ware defensively, and the officials say keep it rolling, and now Alabama calls a timeout. That should be their last. Coming up at halftime, the GMAC halftime report. The classic rivalries today. USC, you are out and a farewell at South Bend for Lou. Ron, you mentioned Alabama's out of timeouts. They had to spend a couple early. Freddie Kitchens one time, clock was running down. He had to make the a call to uh, save the penalty. Then the defense got... Uh, they had a five receiver set Auburn and the defense needed to call a timeout for Alabama. So now they're out of timeout. So again, a good smart throw here by Freddie Kitchens. You could see Woody McCorvey, who is the offensive coordinator, standing uh, on the sideline there visiting uh, with Gene Stallings and the rest of the offensive uh, players. Mike, do you, do you go to the end zone on this play or do you try to do something to set it up and get it out of bounds? No, you still have 21 seconds and you got second and short. You still throw the football. If you pick up the first down and you snow hut on your right back at the line of scrimmage, you can, uh, you, you've got a chance here to get three, four, five plays even off if you do it correctly. It's interesting on Thursday night we were over in Tuscaloosa and uh, I asked Coach Stallings has said something about can, you, your control, you got control of your destiny here as, as far as, you know, the playoff game in the, in the SEC. And he said, we've all had control of our destiny <laughs> since September. Gene always very much a, a realist. Kitchen right over the middle, incomplete as he zinged that one through the hands of Riddle, the intended receiver. And now 15 seconds left. Alabama players looking on thinking wow we had a rush going early and now Auburn grabbed the momentum and headed the other direction in the second half but that's what you expect and what we always expect to get in this rivalry here pitches pressure from the backside and they're gonna get it that was Carson who was relentless sack team that's the second time now you can't take a sack in that situation you gotta throw the ball away one second, and it is halftime. That's the end of the first half with our score. Auburn 20 and Alabama 17.
20 to 17, our score at halftime. And Mike Godfrey, to have you ever seen two quarters as opposite as those were in the first half? Well, really, the Alabama owned the first quarter, Auburn the second quarter. There's a big play right here. Brad Ware, safety, sitting in center field, reading the eyes of Freddie Kitchens. Freddie Kitchens a little late throwing this football and then just threw it inside too far. Brad Ware with the interception. Well, as he takes it to the end zone, Mike, this is what it sounded like on the Auburn sideline and upstairs in the Auburn coach's booth. Go, oh, Jeez. Yeah! 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 Go, go. Come on, Brad! Yeah! Go! 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 So we're back to live action. Freddie Kitchens on the sideline. Auburn will be receiving as they won the toss and deferred to start tonight's wall game. William Watts will kick it off. This is going to be a short kick taken at the 12 yard line by Morrow. And he is around the 25 yard line. Here are the numbers on that first half, Mike. 293 yards for Alabama, but majority of those came in the first quarter. Yeah, the, the big plays in the first quarter, they controlled the clock. They had 12 first downs to six, 293 total yards, but Auburn with two big plays. Now let's see if the Tigers can maintain the momentum that they grabbed away in the second quarter. Craig pumps. He wants to go on top on this first play. It is incomplete down at the 30-yard line. Robert Baker is the guy that they were going for. Deshae Townsend with the cover, and uh, they they went home run on the first play. Another ball that was thrown too late and too long by Damian Craig. Just too much uh, air under this football. Good coverage by Deshae Townsend. Ron, here's where I expect. Now, you made a point early in the ball game about the second, the overtime games at Georgia. You thought maybe they'd tire Auburn out a little bit. And I made a point early about 29 seniors, six seniors on this all Alabama defense. So I'd expect the Alabama defense to pick it up a, uh, a step. Crimson Tide shows blitz. Running play, there is nothing there. So all of a sudden, it's going to be a third down and long as Chris Hood, one of the first men there, to make the hit. Auburn's defense got the turnover for Alabama. The kickoff team got the turnover. Alabama's defense needs to do the same thing for their offense to give them good field position. Ten points off takeaways in the first half for the Auburn Tigers. They were very opportunistic. Right now, they need the 35-yard line to keep this drive going. Craig from the shotgun. Lofts it over the middle, got a man open. Goodson inside the 40, and he's down to the 37-yard line as Samuel made the tackle. 37 yards in the play, and on a third and long and obvious passing situation, I'm surprised they got that on this secondary. Well, they were able to spread the field again with four wide receivers. Tyrone Goodson, number 83, just splits the safety. Cedric Samuel are there in coverage, and also Kelvin Ziegler. short side of the field if he wants it. And he's going to throw, and that's what he puts up. A little too long. Bailey is the guy that he wanted, and that was Bryant on the cover, number 25. Ron, when you look over there, Damian Craig made that check off. He hit a fade early in the ball game. Now, all of a sudden, he looks over the side, and he sees the coverage that he wants right there. So now you get the fade on the outside by Karsten Bailey, number five. That's a difficult pass to throw. Now this is the pass that they that they hit earlier to Tyrone Goodson. Second and ten. Here comes the blitz up the middle. Pass incomplete as he just got it away as quickly as possible to Goodson. See pressure coming. Also 95 Kelvin Moore. 
Well, you can see the strategy here in the second quarter, or second half, unfolding uh, that Terry Bowden is going more to four wide receivers in the second half. He wants to start this ball game, speed up the tempo a little bit on Alabama. Third down. The line that they need is the 27 of Alabama. Craig looks right up the middle, also for the outside, the pressure, and it is caught inside the 30-yard line by Karsten Bailey. Bryant with the cover. Now, he's got to be short, I believe. Now, let's see where they're going to spot it here. 27 and a half. They're about a yard shy. When you spread out the uh, defense with five receivers in the ball game and the blitz is on, you've got man coverage all the way. That's Bryant, Fernando Bryant, letting Karsten Bailey get inside underneath him. You can't do that, Ron. He's going to keep him outside. got to try to, to make contact with him and not allow him inside. It is fourth down. Auburn will go for it. They need to take the ball just inside that 27-yard line. Quick count. Pitch comes... To Beasley and he'll have the first down I believe yep just outside the 25 as Kelvin Moore puts the stop on him Fred Beasley played fullback last year for Auburn they told him if you play fullback this year we'll move you and give you a chance at tailback next year and he's played a lot of tailback but they've also interchanged and played him in fullback position also Auburn Tigers now all of a sudden they've got this thing is in their rhythm they've got it going their way Williams Rusty inside the 20s down to the 19 Cedric Samuel on the stop and they're blocking, they're handling the defensive front of Alabama right now. The Auburn offensive line, Victor Riley, Geno James, James Kiger, Leonard Thomas, Jim Rowe, the offensive line, they picked up the blitz. They were able to get Rusty Williams in the secondary. Williams to the right side, gets a block, going to be wrapped up, he's close to the first down at Samuel who came up and got him, but he fell forward in the vicinity of uh, the 17, maybe the 16 yard line, which is what he needed. The safeties are sitting up so tight for Alabama. You see number the, the, both, both safeties right here, and they'll both come up strong on the run action. That's Cedric Samuel, number seven, just sitting right in the hole, making the play, tough to block him. Third down and short. Pitch. Beasley hit in the backfield. He's not going to have it. The Auburn first down, Chris Hood. The sophomore out of Town Creek is the man who did the play. And you're exactly right. But Ralph Staten, number 41, got penetration on the blitz again. They brought him up inside. He got penetration on the play and never allowed, allowed that play to get started. Fourth down. They need about now two and a half yards as the ball has been marked just outside the 18. They look to the bench and now we see the field goal team trotting on. Jared Holmes will attempt the field goal. In fact, they're going to have to hurry so they don't get a five-yard penalty. 34-yard attempt from the far hash mark. Just got it away. Kick plenty long and he's good. I mean, the play clock had gone to one. The ball was snapped. <laughs> Went to zero and he got it away. Timeout on the field. Our new score. Auburn on top by six. Now the defense as they came off the field, really getting to the crowd, rolling their arms saying, hey, make noise. We need your backing right now. It's getting late. Sean Alexander gets a couple of steps. He'll take it to the 35-yard line. Charles Dorsey on his back. We talked about the Bear winning his 315th. This man here, a protege of his, and the question in the air tonight, is this the last time that he'll be on the sideline here at Legion Field in this Iron Bowl game? Will Gene Stallings step down after tonight? There are many who think that for sure that will happen, Mike. There's a lot of talk up in this press box about that subject. Kitchen. 
Four times he's been sacked. It's Quentin Reese again. And this is a freshman out of Birmingham that Mike was telling you about. He's been playing more and more, and you see why. And, and Freddie Kitchens just looks like a quarterback that's playing with no confidence. He just really is down to zero in his confidence level right now. Doesn't want to make a mistake throwing the interception. He takes the sack from Quentin Reese, number 86. Well, Chris Samuels is the guy who's uh, trying to take care of him. He's a freshman out of Mobile, and Chris has got more than he can say grace over right now. Kitchens pass, got it complete. That's Chad Goss. Nolan came up and uh, put the hit on him, and let's see where they're going to spot it, around the 37-yard line. But again, because of the pass rush, and Freddie Kitchens skating to the outside, Chad Goss had to come back and had to come back underneath the first down marker, forcing another Alabama punt. This Auburn defense is playing great second half. Stockton's kick, this is his best of the night. Very high and very deep. Fair catch is called for and made back at the 13 by Baker. That's a 50-yard boot. We'll catch an NFL countdown tomorrow as Boomer and the boys start your NFL day off right. They'll look at the turnaround of the Cowboys after Michael Irvin's return. Also a talk with the leading rusher in the National Football League, Terrell Davis of Georgia. Plus the best news and information on NFL Countdown tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. Ron, I think this is key right here in this time of the ballgame. 11.21 to go. Mike DeBose's defense has to get this three and out or keep them down inside the 25-yard line and get the ball back for the offense in good field position after a kick. Pitch comes back to Williams. Rusty tries to break a tackle. He'll have three. Straight ahead. There's nothing. You can see the gang tackling Hood. 34, the first man to come through and make the hit. Now, right there behind where they're scrimmaging is the bulk of the Auburn crowd. And that's the reason you heard the boos now. They thought that the Alabama defenders did not stop in time. Ron, again, big third down here. You've got it. Your offense is struggling. You can't go 80 yards, but maybe you can go 50 yards uh, to win the football game. But you can't go 80 and long. And Auburn has punted them down the field. They need to stop this third down play here and force the punt. Third down. They need to take the ball to the 23 to keep this drive going. Play clock is at three. Get it away. Pressure is there. Pass is caught right over the middle by Bailey. And he'll have the Auburn first down at the 29. Well, that was big right there. Alabama with the safety blitz. Cedric Samuel, number 13, on the blitz. Damian Craig just stayed right in there. It's blocked very well. Hit Karsten Bailey first down. Field position again. Auburn, there's the safety in his face, but he made that throw. Damian Craig coming up big for Auburn. Mike, you can't cover much better than no. that. He was just Threw the up. ball right in there. Williams gets outside, turns the corner for five, six, and seven. And Kellen Winslow, what do you have? Well, Ron, I just wanted to piggyback on something that Mike said earlier about Alabama having to stop Auburn. Conversely, Auburn has to have a key driver and eat up some of this time on this clock. They can't come in here one, two, three, and punt the ball because Alabama is not going to be down for the entire ball game. Kellen, right now, the situation, the ball at the, they put it down at the 35. And it's going to be a second down and about four and a half. Boy, Staten out of the ball game, we're told, with a bruised shoulder. Williams gets a block. He's going to have the first down, I believe. Let's see where they're going to spot it. Boy, this is going to be very, very close as Kevin Jackson comes up in the secondary to make the tackle. Also, Michael Myers. And you know, we have not called Myers' name very much tonight. They have done a very good job handling him. I, I think, again, after that first quarter was over, this offensive line of Auburn has come alive. Victor Riley, their big offensive guard, six foot five, 321 pounds, blocking uh, Michael Myers a lot of the time, and Leonard Thomas, number 60. First down, Auburn from the 40. Craig's pass is tipped, 
and then should have been caught, and it was dropped by Goodson. And that's Bryant who got a hand on. Well, he was right there for the interception, Ron. He read the route all the way. Damian Craig tried to get the ball to Tyrone Goodson. You're going to see number 83, Tyrone Goodson, come across the field. Fernando Bryant reads this play right off, and he just got one hand on the football. Couldn't get his other arm up to make that interception. Two catches that should have been made. The ball was spinning kind of strangely after it got tipped. Auburn leads by six. Clock is now under eight and a half. Quarterback draw. Damian Craig right up the middle, and he ran into Ozell Powell. He's going to wind up with about a seven-yard gain. That shows you what a good athlete Damian Craig is and what good feet he has. Because he just kept bouncing around. Ozell Powell had a shot at him, number 78, which you talked about, Ron. It's quarterback draw all the way. See, Ozell had been turned around. He wasn't even sure that he didn't know he had the football. <laughs> wow. So, Alabama defense <laughs> looks a little tired, too, Ron, when you see a play like that by Ozell Powell. He didn't even make the play on the second chance. And it shows me a little bit tired now. Been on the field a long time. Timeout being called by the Auburn Tigers. They stop the clock with 7.49 to play in our ball game, and they lead by a count of 23 to 17. We'll be right back. 23-17, the Auburn Tigers leading. And Mike, and look at the total plays in the second half. Auburn 29 snaps on offense, Alabama only 16. They controlled the ball from the start in the second half. They came out in the wide, four wide receiver set and really have controlled the football. Craig, the only back. It's been an automatic blitz, and that's exactly what happens. Stone right over the middle, has it complete. And Baker being pushed back. Uh, let's see, from where they're giving him forward progress at the Alabama 48, that's a first down. Ron, the best way you can describe this is it's like basketball. You try to find guys to go down and just pivot and try to find open areas and get the football to them because you've got Alabama spread out all over. you got to play man coverage against it. That's Robert Baker, number 21. Kelvin Ziegler, number 20, making a tackle. And they've got the field spread, and uh, they're controlling the pass rush. And they're finding the open receivers. Williams dancing up through what appeared to be a small hole. He's going to wind up with a gain of close to six yards on the play. And Mike again in that play. And I was trying to watch Michael Myers. They have really done a good job of double teaming him. But they knew they were going to have to. Yeah, they, they knew. They had a lot of respect for Michael Myers. They're doing a nice job on the play calling in the second half for Auburn. Really, from the, the second quarter on, has been excellent. Because now we talked about spreading them out with four wide receivers. They come back in now with two backs. And they're going to try to pound Auburn. Or Alabama, rather. See Rudd sneaking up into the hole. They run right by him, but that's a great tackle from the secondary Cedric Samuel to knock down Williams. That's the problem when you play Alabama. You have to find a way to control the safeties so that they don't always make plays like you're just going to see here. Sitting up so tight in the line of scrimmage, pitch to Rusty Williams, number three. You see number 13 sneak up, Cedric Samuel. There's nobody to block him. There's, you're just out of people. Either you crack him, crack back with the wide receiver, you got to try to throw behind him to keep him honest. This is the 11th play of the drive, and we're about to go under six minutes. That's all left in this ballgame. Play clock is down to three, down to two. Just got it off. Blitz is there. Staten hits him as he gets his pass away, and it is in and out of the hands. Baker as Townsend had the cover. Covered like a blanket, Ron DeShade Townsend running stride for stride with Robert Baker. Man coverage again, blitz is on. You're out on an island if you're the corner right here, running in his hip pocket. When he turns to make that play, you get your hand up there. DeShade Townsend knocks the football away. So after picking up almost six yards on the first down, the uh, Auburn situation is they run out of downs and they're going to have to punt the football away. 5.46 to play. And now this clock is going to get very, very quick. Auburn by six.
Fair catch is called for and is made by Townsend at the 15. It's a 29-yard kick, but the Crimson Tide will be scrimmaging from their own 14. We'll be right back. No, well, we've got our own little shootout here, and right now Alabama's holding the gun. But since the first quarter, they kind of aimed it toward their own head, or foot, I should say. They're 86 yards away. Five minutes and 37 seconds left in the ball game. That last Auburn drive, just shy of six minutes. Kitchens pass, complete Vaughn over the middle to the 31-yard line. Good for 17. Well, this is what they're playing for tonight. Alabama wins in the West. They're the division winner. Auburn wins and an LSU win over Arkansas next week, then LSU would be the division winner. Auburn wins, LSU loses, then Auburn would be the winner of the Western Division of the Southeastern Conference. And the prize, of course, is a trip to play Florida. In Atlanta, you're right. Two weekends from today. Kitchens right over the middle, has the pass complete at the 46-yard line. Ron, right here, Freddie Kitchens. Junior quarterback, he's six foot two, now standing in the pocket, throwing little square in passes. Hits Kelvin Hall here. Two in a row now. Hits Vaughn, and then he comes back with Kelvin Hall. Now that should open the running game a little bit. That's against Antoine Nolan. So let's we'll see now if they get the ball in the running back's hands or keep throwing the football here. Cheer goes up, roll tied. Kitchens looking, looking. Flag comes down. That's probably going to be holding as Kitchens runs. Enough for the first down. Out of bounds down at the Auburn 39. But let's check out this marker. And when it was thrown and where it was thrown, you'd almost have to guess holding. Good guess, Ron. It's holding. Our situation, Auburn 23, Alabama 17, 440 left to play. Following the penalty, it's going to be a first down and 31 yards to go. Pass incomplete. Riddle couldn't hold on as it was thrown hard and low. That was rare with the cover. Can't tell you how important that last drive was for Auburn. They held the ball five minutes and 45 seconds, and although they came away with no points, they kept this man's football team off the field, and now they're going to very shortly have to go to hurry up. And, Ron, the penalty is really tough to overcome in this situation. They need to get a little bit of it back on this play. Kitchen steps up, throws the safety valve, and he threw it low. That was Travis Smith, the fullback. Now you got to get it all back on third down now to keep these chains moving. Uh, and the other thing that's important right now, Alabama has two timeouts left. So 429 to go. So if they don't make it here, they're going to punt. They're going to have to punt the football and then play defense one more time and try to stop Auburn and get their offense back in fairly decent field position. But here they need to go 31 yards here for a first down. Look for them just to hang it up here, Ron. 4 of 13 on third down conversions. Kitchens is sacked. Leonard Carlson and Carson has him. That's the fifth time that they have been sacked tonight. Can't take a sack again. I know it's easy to say, and you're not out there playing. And Freddie Kitchens is the one looking at the pass rush, and it's very difficult to get the ball off. And now Hayden Stockton has to deliver. Mike, a moment ago, Kitchens had run and it was out of bounds at the 39 of Auburn. Then the penalty came, and look what's happening now. They're punting from back at their own 20-yard line. This is a rocket. They go all the way back to the 25. 55 yards on the punt, nine on the return. Now you turn it over to your defense. Bill Oliver, of course, on that side of the ball has done his job as a defensive coordinator at Auburn. Getting the ball back for Auburn's offense. Now Mike DeBose's defense 
The pupil under Bill play, Oliver bro. has to get the football back for his offense or get a turnover here. Bill told me last night, one of the last things he talked about, he said, I said, a key in the ball game, he said, we got to create turnover. Well, five times Alabama has turned the football over tonight, and it has been key. Craig pitches back to Williams. Stuck hard at the line of scrimmage by Cedric Samuel. Now that clock is really going to start rolling in a hurry if you're Alabama. Three and a half minutes down to 329. <laughs> Auburn with one timeout. Alabama with two. Enough to keep the ball on the ground, Ron, and keep this clock moving. Craig, running play. Williams puts a head down, and he's going to have about three. Now it's going to be third down. They got to take it to the 44 yard line, and Alabama's going to call a timeout to stop the clock. So let's take a break. 2.49 left to play. Auburn by six. Craig does not want to go out of bounds, goes down. You can see the official winding that arm. He stayed on the field of play as Staten and Hood combined on the stop. And now we're about to go under two and a half to play. Ron, that was a run all the way. Trying to get the quarterback outside just to spend some time. What a nice play again by Ralph Staten. Fought off the block by Fred Beasley. Kept uh, Damian Craig inside of him and made the tackle. Well, ESPN Sunday Night NFL continues tomorrow at 8 o'clock as Brett Favre and the Green Bay Packers look to rebound from their Monday night loss as they take their air show to St. Louis for a battle with the Rams and Isaac Bruce. ESPN Sunday Night NFL tomorrow following NFL primetime. Well, you practice special teams every day. And you, know, you go back to the early fall practice when you have two a days and you start working on fundamentals and you talk about all these situations. 228, your offense is struggling a little bit. You need a punt return or you need a punt block right here out of the Alabama special teams. Auburn on the other side, they want to put the punt the football and make Alabama's offense go the distance 70, 80 yards, which they think they got control of that. Ty's coming after it, and he got it away, and they ran into the punter, but no flag. Going to go dead at the 26-yard line. 37-yard punt, but most importantly, they didn't get it blocked. Ron, let's see if they go right back to the square ends, to either Calvin Hall or Michael Vaughn. About 12 yards square ends. That's what Freddie Kitchens throws the best. And Michael Vaughn is the leading receiver on this Alabama football team. Here are the possessions by Alabama in the second half, and there are a total of six of them. Punt, interception, interception, punt, punt, punt. Kitchens gets it away, incomplete. Calvin Hall is the man that he wanted. Marcel West coming in from the bench. He's bringing the play. Goss will head out. 2:09 left in the ball game. Auburn by six. Four wide receiver set now take, taking Pat Hape out of the ball game. That pass for Vaughn Riddle, I beg your pardon, 29, overthrown. Freddie Kitchen's just zero confidence right now, Ron. You can see it in his throws. He's trying to push the football, not throwing the football. He's just uh, having a rough go of it here in the fourth quarter. In the first quarter, he, he was just almost oh, he immaculate. Was, he was perfect. I mean, yeah. he threw the passes, got the ball down the end zone, did everything you needed, needed him to do. He hit six of his first seven passes in that uh, opening quarter. 
third down. Kitchens gets it away, has it complete, and that is Buchanan. And Kitchens is down. He took quite a shot as he got it away, and it looks as though that his left leg is injured. Is Ronnie, he he's a tough guy. I'll tell you what, he's played with cracked ribs. He's had a problem all year. He hasn't complained about it. He stays in there. Wow, did he take Mark a Smith. hit? <laughs> and Mark Smith is one of the better defensive linemen, and they didn't expect him to play tonight also. He's coming in and planning a hurt. On first down, Kitchens. Receivers didn't help him right there, Ron. Pumped that football, and they just stayed still. They didn't help him. They didn't come back to him, and they didn't take off, and uh, they just kind of sat down on their route. A minute and 50 seconds left as you see Woody McCorvey talking it over with uh, Gene Stallings and uh, with Chad Goss who brings in the play. Freddie Kitchens is the battler. Oh, he'll battle you the whole way. Sixteen of twenty eight two fifty four two touchdowns but the figure on the right is the one that makes you cringe. Yeah, pretty good numbers except for that one. Safety valve, Riddle turns it upfield, cuts it back into the middle, has the first down and runs over his own man. Buchanan was looking around, didn't know what to block or what, he got run over. That's just like a running play there, throwing a little flare out to Dennis Riddle, getting the ball in the open field, and then let him take off and make some yards, and that's exactly what he did. 139 to play, Alabama with another first down and over midfield. Kitchens from the shotgun. Again, they swing it out. Riddle cuts it forward. He may have another first down. Yes, he does. Now, the official is saying continue to roll the clock, which it will, but the chains will keep it until they get them reset. Terry Bowden paces, and for good reason, because this is the best that Alabama has been on offense in the second half. That same thing again. Going to go for the end zone. He's got a man there, and pass interference is going to be called. Vaughn had gotten behind the defensive back. Charles Rose, Ron. Just ate him up. Went right over the top of him. Charles Rose probably made a good move on this particular play, taking the interference. Yeah, pass interference against the defense. 15 from the Freddie Kitchens again getting outside, hanging this football up. Let's see if Charles Rhodes, number 31, see he was face guarding all the way on Michael Vaughn. But you're right, Michael Vaughn is going to have a touchdown if he doesn't do that. He made sure he didn't he didn't catch the football. Now the penalty moves it to the 17 and a half yard line. We have 112 left to play. It is Auburn 23 and Alabama 17. Ron, if you're Auburn, you better know where Michael Vaughn is right now. Number 22 and the back out of the backfield. They're having success going to him. Kitchen steps up into the pocket, pumps it. He'll run inside the 10, and he's down to the 9. Brumbaugh makes the tackle. 102, down to 101. Alabama has no timeouts left. And one of their touchdowns early in the ball game, they hit Michael Vaughn on a quick slant pattern. 47 down to 46 second and one pass right over the middle hits him in the hand dropped it then did he catch it can't tell they're going to say yes it is first and goal alabama he juggled it twice and then came down with it ron that was a slant pass right there to michael vaughn if he'd have caught it on the first catch might have scored had a chance but you got to give him a lot of credit making the second catch Clock is rolled back in, down to 37, down to 36. Tenth play of the drive, swings out the pass, and thrown too low for Riddle. Spikes was coming out to cover, but there also was a blocker out there in the area. Well, Ron, I, I think, again, if you hit Riddle out there and he can get off to the sidelines, at least get out of bounds and stop that clock, pick up a few yards, but uh, still a lot of time for Alabama here. Of course, Terry Bowden knows that time's facing him also. Timeout, Auburn Tigers. 
and they have none left. Good time out, though, because what they want to do right now, with only 32 seconds left, what they want to be able to do is talk it over right now with the linebackers in the secondary of what they expect Alabama to throw at them right here. Tonight's Visa players of the game from the Auburn Tigers. Spikes to Keo Spikes, nine tackles and one interception. And from Alabama, Dennis Riddle, 21 rushes, 131 yards. As part of their continuing effort to further the development of amateur athletics, Visa is proud to donate $1,000 to each of these universities on behalf of these athletes. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Kevin Winslow coming to you from Birmingham, Alabama. And uh, trust me, nobody has left Legion Field. I mean, this and, and the thing with this kind of drama for the next 364 days, they will talk about this one and replay it and relive it. Some folks don't even want to look. It is second down and goal. Kitchen swings it out to Riddle. At the five, he will score! Six seconds left. Now, it is not an automatic. The kicking game has not been 100% for the Crimson Tide. Well, they still got to make this extra point. Auburn's going to come off the corner hard. Brock with the attempt. Gets a good pass. Kick is up. Alabama on top by one. Freddie Kitchens, they moved the running back to the wide side of the field now. Dennis Riddle is going to flare out to the outside, and that's what I said. When you get in the ball outside, now you can't overrun him. Ricky Neal just overran the play. Now you get the ball in your best back's hands in the open field. It was a good call by Gene Stallings and Woody McCorvey. He gets the touchdown. Ron, I want to say one thing here as you see Gene Stallings. I'll tell you, credit Freddie Kitchens. Now, he threw three interceptions, but he was able to bring his club back on the key drive. Now, Terry Baum still has 26 seconds to go. Of course, he doesn't have any timeouts, but you still got the long ball possibilities. William Watts with the kickoff. So that goes out of bounds. So they're going to get a little head start as far as taking it up the field. And, of course, nothing comes off the clock because of it going out of bounds. And Alabama played the first quarter and in, in the last of the fourth one. And in between, Auburn kind of dominated this football game. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. It's been... It's actually this is a third different ball game. The first one was Alabama, the second was Auburn, and, and now the Crimson Tide has come back. And let's see if Auburn yeah, still has still another have a chapter shot, to go in this book. Still got a shot. Craig on top. Too far. Karsten Bailey is the man that he was looking for. That took six seconds. We have 20 ticks left. Terry Bowden, his ball club just really not functioning early. They made some adjustments. They really came on 
They got to get it done now. Craig under pressure. Runs away from Myers. Gets his pass away deep. It is knocked away by Deshae Townsend. And we have eight seconds left. Is it this man's last game on the sideline against the Auburn Tigers for the Alabama Crimson Tide? Those are the rumors tonight. As you look at this play by Townsend as he reads the receiver's eyes and knocks it away. Good coverage by Deshae Townsend. He's played a whale of a football game against Karsten Bailey. But to prevent defense in here, now it's guard to goal line time. Swings it out, has it complete to Williams. Gets out of bounds at the 41. Two seconds showing on the clock. Secondary has dropped off with two seconds left. The line of scrimmage is the 40-yard line. They've dropped all the way back to the 10 and 15-yard line. Looks like a kickoff return. Damian Craig, everything he's got. And it is knocked away by Alabama. Great game. This is it for you, coach. He's out here, Jay. So, Gene Stallings heads to the locker room. Almost an improbable finish, Mike. The way they had stuttered and stammered on offense. You can look at the Auburn faithful as this young man right here. They can't believe it because they had closed the door on this Alabama football team offensively, but the last gasp was good enough. Ron, I guess that's what makes this rivalry one of the best. The great effort that was given by both these teams, and they laid it all out in this football field, both these teams. Again, we repeat the question. We're going to try to ask Gene, but he was too excited to get onto the locker room. Is it his final game to coach the regular season here at the University of Alabama? We'll find out, I'm sure, in the next few days. Once again, our final score, Alabama 24, Auburn 23. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.